Welcome to We Believe, a consideration of religious beliefs and God's Word, examined in conversation by James F. Walsh, an attorney and Roman Catholic deacon, and Dr. Richard Shriver, United Methodist minister and professor of theology. Each discussion embraces carefully chosen subjects, selected in an effort to deepen your religious awareness in the sincere hope that we believe will help provide a bridge of understanding among all the children of God. Well, good day, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to We Believe. We have some very special folks with us today. To my immediate left here is Dr. Richard Shriver, my usual guest. Hello, Jim. And to his left, 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 left is John Basio from Italy originally. I called him the, what did I call you, the... That's Kim, enough. No, that's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Ballinger. Uh, Kim. We're glad to have both of you. I called you the, the Italian stallion, Italian. didn't I? And now we set yeah. for a prize yeah. fighter, I think. That's good. Anyway, but John will be talking to us today, or leading the discussion at least, about the virtues. And Richard is going to tell us now what a virtue is, I think. Yeah, well, let me let me start, let me set, it, set uh -huh. this up. Uh, we are, this is the first show of four shows about the virtues. Yeah. The virtues are those habits, those behaviors that make us successful in life. So, mm -hmm. Richard, what, what is a virtue? <laughs> That's a correct question. He gave me about a five minute warning on this. Uh -huh. <laughs> uh, I know that you're going to, in the next few shows, uh, distinguish particular kinds of virtue. Uh, so let me react to the question with a generalization, so to speak. Uh, I think from my Latin that it, it, it really relates to truth, but, it, uh, but I perceive virtue as the things that are good and right in life. And our virtues are the, the things that we do well uh, to make for a, uh, a good life, but a godly life. Yes. We will see the correct answer, or the answer, in the video that we are just going to be, that we're going to be seeing in a few seconds. Uh, in the meantime, really I want to say that the virtues we are talking about here are called cardinal virtues, the fundamental virtues in life, which are prudence, justice, courage, and temperance. Just imagine what life would be in our society if we did not have these, beha these, these virtues, if we behaved imprudently and so on. And so we want to focus in these four uh, shows on how we live the virtues in the family. How do parents teach their children the virtues? Mm -hmm. And how do children yeah. practice the virtues? And so on. And so we'll be taking about uh, 10 minutes to watch a video that uh, shows how people have responded to the question such as mm -hmm. what is a virtue and what is prudence. So the first show will be on prudence, which is the habit of making the right decisions. Many years ago, before the internet, and even before the radio and television were invented, our ancestors told stories to remind one another of the good habits, the virtues, that help families and societies thrive. One of the stories is still recounted in families today. It's about an old lion and a fox. Once upon a time, there was a lion that had grown old. He hid inside a cave, pretending to be sick. And whenever animals came to visit, he would grab them and he would eat them up. One day a fox came by the cave. The fox kept a distance and asked the lion, How are you feeling? The lion responded, Oh, I am not well. So why don't you come in? No thanks, said the fox. I have decided not to come in. I see many footprints of animals entering your cave, and none of them is leaving. This story reminds us that in life, we need to be watchful and prudent like the fox. Prudence, the habit of making wise choices, is an important virtue. 
This program invites us to reflect on the good habits we call the cardinal virtues, prudence, justice, courage, and temperance. They are called cardinal because they are like the hinges that open the door to a successful life. The practice of these virtues forms our character and helps us blossom as human beings. If someone asked you, what is a virtue? How would you answer? A virtue is something in my mind that you aspire to. It is a good thing to have. A virtue is a good habit. A virtue brings out, to me, it brings out the best in you. A virtue is something that allows one to best reflect a godlike behavior in your actions. We begin this program with a reflection on the virtue of prudence, the habit of making wise decisions. We read in the Bible, the prudent man looks where he is going. The Catechism teaches us that prudence gives direction to our life. The prudent person discerns what is good and chooses the right path to achieve it. How would you define the virtue of prudence? If someone says to me that I have to be prudent, I think they're telling me that I need to think through the situations and then make sure that I'm doing the right thing for the right reason. When Kim wants me to be prudent, she wants me to understand that whatever I do may have some repercussions. Being prudent involves three things. It's The first is gathering information and knowing all the facts. Then use your judgment, use your reason to decide on what's the best course of action. And then you actually do the right course of action. We learn prudence from our families. Do you remember the day your parents let go of your bicycle seat to let you ride on your own? That moment was accompanied by many words of advice to be prudent. Be careful. Pay attention. Keep your eyes on the road. Remember what I told you. You know, my parents gave me a strong impression of what right and wrong was through their example. My father told me that you can buy anything you want, you can go anywhere you want, but just think about how long it took you to earn that money. Look before you leap. Your actions have consequences. My parents really passed on to me a strong sense of family. And when you have that strong sense of family, I think that prudence just follows. Whether we drive a car, make a purchase, decide what to eat, or wonder how to respond to a comment our spouse made, acting prudently helps us avoid costly mistakes and helps us make choices that benefit our family and us. What are some of the prudent choices that you and your spouse make each day? For example, when you use the internet. On the internet, I'm very prudent on not letting curiosity the best of me. I know my inclinations and I know my habits. Sometimes I'm attracted to pornography. So based on that, I have acted and I've installed filters. I've had my identity stolen before, so I'm real careful. I do have a Facebook account, but I don't post the fine details of my life. How are you prudent when driving? I have to control my thoughts and my actions when I'm driving. I try and drive defensively all the time. Parents always set an example for your kids. We never answer the phone or text when we are driving. If we do something incorrect, we are teaching them to do something incorrect. Mm. This is an area that I am not very skilled at <laughs> because I drive very fast. And I pray a lot while I'm driving, and especially when he's driving. How do you manage your money prudently? Well, the first thing would be setting a budget with your spouse. We have been supporting each other as far as following our budget, and it helps. I coupon. For me to be prudent when I shop is to keep in mind that I don't have to buy everything that I see. My wife shops a whole lot. Uh, she enjoys shopping, but she, she, buy, she can go shopping all day and not buy anything. So I think she stays in the budget. She looks for sales. 
uh, you know, if, if, if it's not on sale, then she's probably not going to buy it, you know. What prudent actions do you take to protect your marriage? When I'm at work or, or with others, um, I always try to speak um, in the positive about Steve. Um, I don't talk about her negatively. I don't refer to her negatively. I don't get into any of the honeydews or my wife wants me to do this or my wife wants me to do that because it's not fair. I keep the relationship professional. I really don't spend a lot of time alone with male colleagues. It's easy for a woman to get in trouble because uh, we're more friendly and we like hugging and always smiling. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. ring is prominent. Okay. I travel a tremendous amount of time. And one of the actions I make sure that I do is to stay out of bars, stay out of situations that would, may create temptations to me because you never know if you've been drinking too much. In making wise decisions, it is essential to know what is right and what is wrong. What do you do when you're faced with a difficult decision? When I encounter a problem that I don't know how to solve, I think it's prudent to ask somebody that you respect, somebody that you admire, and that you consider to have you know, prudence uh, to help you. A difficult decision, we prefer to uh, talk together with a with a priest. In making a decision, I would do some serious praying about it. Then I would probably do some reading as well as seeking the advice from other people that I respect. I talk to Bill about it. My faith helps me discern what's right and wrong. My faith helps me to, to approach the decision with the adage of what would Jesus do? We do turn to God, we do pray over that decision. And it's not that you know that you're gonna get hit over the head with the answer, but sometimes you come to a sense of peace. Prayer helps you focus on what's truly important to you. My faith is like having somebody on my shoulder, um, be it God, be it my mother, who always said, don't do that. Remember how I raised you. Remember what God is, is looking forward from you. So just remember, I'm going to be there for you. Like the fox in the story, we act prudently in our daily life when we stop and think before acting, when we consider our options and their consequences and then we take action to pursue what is right. Live prudently. Teach your children to make wise decisions. And together, with God's help, we will make the world a better place. Welcome back. 
we have just seen a video on the virtues, the cardinal virtues, and in particular, in particular the, the virtue of prudence. And so, um, thank you for being here. I would like to ask you, what struck you about this video? Anything uh, struck you? Well, I was, uh, I was immediately struck by the, uh, the couple who talked about positive messaging about your spouse, either when you're in a group or when you're in the family. And to me, that is so very important, especially uh, within the family unit, that you build up your spouse, that you don't tear down your spouse in front of the children. You don't say negative things about your spouse in front of the children, because they do pick up on that. And other pe people pick up on that. It's, to me, that's absolutely vital. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's very important. Yeah. It's very important to be united and to be positive about your spouse. Uh, Richard, what? Uh, I, I caught right at the beginning of the, of the video uh, a definition of prudence as the habit of making wise choices, uh, which sort of makes prudence and wisdom uh, uh, of equals. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and then it w went on, uh, uh, thinking things through before doing them, and then in order to make right uh, reason and the right thing to do. Yes. Uh, again, I like the one, is that a priest that says that, that, uh, that prudence is dependent upon uh, a sense of God? Actually, you will be surprised. It's a fellow Protestant, a friend uh -huh. of mine. Uh, he, is a, he is a Methodist. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> he has Look at the big head. He has a lot of wisdom. He has a lot of wisdom. <laughs> Jim, what the... Well, what? I think it struck me is that actions have consequences. Yes. That's what has been hitting over and over. This is a district attorney. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You know, well, I, I worked with, reaction, I worked with yeah. Tom's brother, who was the DA. I was assistant DA for, I was up there 20 years. <clears throat> And you know, you might say, I, my I, brother was. Yeah, Tom, your yeah. brother was, and he and I got along well. And but anyway, it occurred to me I met a lot of criminals, and they're not necessarily evil, nor are they stupid. But boy, do they lack prudence. And I, I got a story I'll tell you about <laughs> yeah, it if, you, if this is appropriate. Sure, that's very appropriate. Well, I know this young lady. She's married to the not married to the guy, living with this fellow. They have two kids, and they're thinking about getting married sooner or later. That's that's not too prudent. But anyway, uh, he he wanted a, he wanted a computer, and fortunately, he found a fellow on the street that he didn't know and had never seen before, who would sell him a thousand dollar computer for a hundred dollars. Uh, he got him down to fifty dollars. Now, it might have been prudent to think maybe there's something a little strange here. Right, well, because, because if I can interrupt you a second, uh, we saw in the video there are three steps to prudence, right? Oh, observe, judge, and act. Yeah, Ch get all the facts he, he first. Definitely wasn't being get all the facts. facts. Well, the fact <laughs> is he was concerned whether he gets something for $1,000 worth 50, see? That was his facts, right? Well, he, he enjoyed the thing for a while, and he wanted to sell it, so he takes it to a pawn shop with his girlfriend, his, his spouse, more or less. And he, but he forgot, his, he forgot his ID, so he told her to <laughs> give her ID. They got $300. Well, you know. They sold it back uh, to the pawn sold shop. Sold it to the pawn shop. 300 <laughs> Prudence would suggest that our detectives check the pawn shops about every two or three weeks. And of course, this was found to be the result of a burglary. So she had given her name, address, and telephone. Naturally, the police called on her. And so she's been arrested <laughs> and put up bond. And I said, now, is he going to fess up to the fact that he's the guy that bought it? Well, she said, he, well, let's hope he does. Yeah. Because it's a lack of prudence to buy something worth $1,000 mm -hmm. for $50. Mm -hmm. And it's a lack of prudence From to, take it, you know. to take it uh, to a pawn shop where the police check about every two or three weeks. Absolutely. And that's, that's like a lot of people I met in my <laughs> 20 years at the DA. He was not being the fox. 
Yeah, <laughs> that's right. He was not watching <laughs> not or paying the attention. Fox. <laughs> not being the fox. You know, one of the things that come to mind is how prudence is something that we live moment after moment because every time we make a decision, just think about how many decisions you had to make to get here today. And the same for, for you at home watching this. How many decisions have you had to make today? And each of them required thinking, get all the facts, check your options, what is best for you, and then act. Mm -hmm. And so it, it's something that touches our mm -hmm. lives, uh, you know, every day. Well, there was some organization that had a motto, observe, judge, and act. I'm trying to think of what that group was. Do you recall? It's some the uh, Catholic group, I think. Yeah, I think it's the CFM, the Catholic, yeah, Catholic Family. Yes, whatever it was, anyway, mm -hmm. it's a good, mm -hmm. good... It had to be Catholic. That probably was yeah. Catholic. Yeah. <laughs> they were the, some of the people I met at the DA's office. <laughs> <laughs> Not Methodist. So yeah. imagine the opposite now. If What would life be like if people around you are not prudent? Hmm. For example, when you drive. Ah. You mean like when we were coming into church on the interstate and we were driving the speed limit and we we're in the left lane thinking if we're driving the speed limit you know we we were in the passing lane and suddenly a red pickup truck nearly takes off our front fender as he mm. goes flying by us at about 90 yeah you know and uh yeah. yeah, that is one of the benefits of these virtues, that the, the cardinal virtues, because they are really what keeps us working together as a society. We will see later when we talk about fairness and we talk about courage and talk about temperance. But, you know, prudence is kind of, it is uh, defined throughout history as the charioteer. Yeah. The one, the one that holds all of the other virtues, because prudence, you make decisions. It determines the way. That's right. It determines how you yeah. make your decisions. Yeah. And you know, back to back to the family, we have to teach our children to make prudent decisions. You have to do that with your kids. Well, that's what I think is interesting about the virtues is that no one is born with them. They all have to be taught, and that is a a primary function of the family of the parents. Uh, of the the people that you let your children associate with, mm -hmm. uh, the friendships that they make, the people that they associate with, you want them to be around people who have good judgment. Yes. You want them to be uh, associated with families who have parents who have good judgment. Mm -hmm. Nobody's born with these things; they have to learn them. Um, right. Right. I I go back to that quote where the child who is no longer a child but uh, becomes a teenager and a adult and then has a family of his own and he finally says, makes the statement, it's amazing how much smarter my father gets as I get older. <laughs> <laughs> He's learning. <laughs> He's learning. <laughs> you know, what's interesting about these virtues, and we'll be repeating this in the next uh, sh uh, show also, is that they reflect the best of what being a human being is. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the, the society since the beginning of history, people since the beginning of history have grappled with the question, what does it mean to be a person? Yeah. And they have, there's a convergence uh, of, of knowledge that these are the th qualities that d makes us human uh, special. Uh, if you go back to the Old Testament, mm -hmm. in the Book of Wisdom, which I'm sure mm -hmm. it's, a, it's an apocryphal book for, for the Protestants, but King Solomon wrote, moderation, which is temperance, and prudence, justice, and fortitude, nothing in life is more useful than these. Mm -hmm. At the same time, actually, shortly after that, in the Greek world, so this is a convergence between the Old Testament, the Greek philosophers, uh, Plato, 400 years before Christ, said that to, in order to have a good city, people, the citizens, have to have these virtues. And he wrote them. Wisdom, which is prudence, courage, temperance, and justice. And then Cicero, in the Roman uh, world, said the same thing. And then the, all our philosophers, Augustine, 
uh, Aquinas and, and so on. They've all said the They've all said these are the foundation of society. Yes. Yes. And we don't talk about those. Well, you know, it's just a pra in the practical order of living a life. You come sometime, come to uh, decisions, you just don't know which way to go with it. Mm -hmm. you know? The prudent thing to do is to try to figure out somebody whose judgment you trust. Yes. Who maybe has been through this That's same right. thing before. And just quietly say, well, hey, buddy, would you mind? Mm -hmm. Give me mm -hmm. your opinion on something. And that way you can kind of get a fix on it. Yes. But there are, there are people who, who are nice, wonderful people that go through life making imprudent decisions mm -hmm. and, and getting in hot water. Yeah. And, uh, the that question that, that is kind of critical for all of us, and I, I saw this in the movie, in one of the movies I saw, and I, all of a sudden I'm drawing a blank on, on the name of it. Um, it's a person that is going, going somewhere and asks the, the taxi driver, <laughs> yeah. When you when you have to make a difficult decision, what do you do? She's going with two different men. That's right. That's uh, and I forget the name of the uh, movie whatever that is. Whatever the name of it. Uh, so the question is for all of us: is how do we make decisions, especially the difficult ones? Do you consult with people, Richard? <coughs> yeah, I I, w I would. <laughs> I would ask my wife. <laughs> well, that's a start. <laughs> well, that's a good. That's good an excellent start. answer <laughs> there. <laughs> I would probably come to Jim Walsh, you know. Uh, yeah. if no, he's uh, in trouble or something. Yeah, uh -huh. uh, you probably. I pray, think right? I would. Uh, one of the important things I think is to sleep on it. Sure. Yeah. sure. You don't do it quickly. Don't just jump. You don't mm -hmm. do it quickly. Yeah, that is odd. Yeah. It is true. I think a little rest sometimes, sleeping on it, mm -hmm. is sometimes the answer. Do you suppose you think while you're asleep? I, mean, sharp. I think I the benefit is that you have time to let your emotions or your yeah. attachments cool down, and yeah. then you can see a little more objectively what it is that you are. I solve a lot of problems in the middle of the night. <laughs> uh, That's good. Uh, yeah. Then you yeah. sleep well? Yeah, I sleep well, but, you know, I'll wake up and I don't know. I yeah. just, it, but I need, I need time. So, uh, Jim and Richard and Kim, thank you for being here. My pleasure. Uh, we, this has been a, a very fruitful conversation. Uh, a prudent con conversation. A, a prudent conversation, <laughs> a fruitful conversation. <laughs> Incidentally, uh, I love your Italian accent. Well, thank I just you. think we're thank you. really excited I to have I hope you it. understand everything oh, I we say. Oh, yeah. we do. Uh, anyway, we will be uh, showing uh, the next show. If you, if you follow us, it will be on the virtue of justice, yeah. fairness. And with that, uh, we will say, uh, We'll see you the next time. Thank you for being here.